and uh, a very good evening from Techie Bees, and we welcome you all to the uh, live demo of Big Data Hadoop Developer Training Program by Trainer Srinivas Malampati. Now, before uh, we go ahead and start up the session, well, it becomes our responsibility to go ahead and give you guys an introduction about the trainer. Well, talking about Srinivas, Srinivas comes with a total of 18 years of experience in IT as a consultant, trainer, and mentor, with over 15 years of experience in assisting staffing organizations to mentor the candidates in Java, Spring, Web Services, Hadoop, Yarn, Spark, Storm, and other Hadoop ecosystem components. Now, talking about his experience on Hadoop, now, Srinivas comes with good six years of experience in Hadoop and its ecosystem, pertaining to Pig, Hive, Scoop, Hadoop database training, and also he's actively involved in mentoring organization with a Hadoop usage analysis and implementation. Now, he's also gone ahead and trained participants from companies like JPMC, which is JP Morgan Chase, Microsoft, Wells Fargo, Fidelity, SAS, Bank of America, Vodafone, just to name a few. And he's also done online trainings for companies like Zalantech, Nishitech, and now TechEBs as well. Now he also adds, you know, has a good exposure in different phases of software development cycles, which includes business requirement, system analysis, documentation, designing and development, CR management, unit testing, integration testing, product deployment, and also to relate into the same in training. Now, talking about his training experience, well, he's always got a con you know, participant satisfaction of more than 90% in all his training batches. Now, talking about his specialities, Srinivas specializes in Hadoop, Yarn, Spark, Storm, Big Hive Scoop, Java, Spring, MVC Savion, BPM, and HD Insight. So that's a quick introduction about Srinivas. Well, now I would let Srinivas take over this session. Srinivas, you can take over, please. Thank you. Yeah, good, Dasnil. I uh, appreciate uh, giving the introduction about me. Very good evening, friends. I appreciate uh, your interest in looking towards big data. So when you have uh, planned to take this demo, definitely you might have done some homework or you have inputs from different sources regarding Hadoop, maybe from internet, maybe through your friends or maybe through your own market research. So in our today's discussion, I would like to discuss very few things, but very interesting and important things. The first and the foremost thing which I would like to discuss in the today's demo is to make you to clearly understand what is big data. Very in detail. How big data is connected or related to the term what you are listening all the time that is Hadoop how these two are related to each other, how big data is connected to Hadoop, what relationship exists between big data and Hadoop. And the third, Hadoop and its ecosystem.
probably finally we are going to end up with Q and A. You have any specific uh, questions on big data, Hadoop ecosystem, career perspective, anything? You can also interpret uh, interrupt me in between. If you are not able to understand anything, you always can do that. If it is possible, I would like to address then and there itself. If not, at least end of the session. I would like to take up your questions and make sure that your purpose of coming to your today's live demonstration on Hadoop needs to be met. Your one hour of uh, time needs to be productive. That's what we are aiming at basically. To begin with, have a look at this one, which is the energy or the fuel to all our learning process, anything. I don't want to hesitate uh, here sharing with you. The ultimate energy to any of our learning process is directly or indirectly linked up with your pay packages or career perspective or betterment in terms of your day-to-day -day life. So hope this is going to give you some understanding. Big data and data science, how your skill set in each component, the different levels of pay packages you have in the industry, will be slightly more or less, but you have of this range. And you look at this one very closely. In the big data space, <clears throat> Most of the jobs are confined to the analytics. That is what we are going to do as part of uh, uh, our course. Data science, set of jobs, something like statistics. This is just to give you a brief feel on uh, uh, the domain. Have a look at this one. You always need to start your career in the big data space, either as a data engineer or as a analyst. Over a period of time, based on your experience, the knowledge, your additional skills acquired, your domain expertise, the ability to understand the problem, decompose it to the extent where we can give the meaningful insights of it, you rise to the level of data scientist. So it's a wonder to me all the times that how come the companies are running the courses for data scientists. Running a course for data science is okay. At least a part of that, we'll be able to understand how to use R, how to work with Python, all these acceptable. But a data scientist cannot be made just with a course. I can make you a data engineer. I can make you an analyst, but I cannot make you scientist just with a course. That comes only with your experience, your expertise, the skill set, what you acquire over a period of time, the ability to write the algorithms, run off. It's all based on the time, not based on the skill that you acquire immediately. So it is always a good thing that you start your career as a data engineer or as a data analyst and over a period of time, you raise to the extent of data scientist. That's what the, uh, the good strategy in terms. 
not uh, it may not be the accurate uh, aspects but how you see the growth rate in terms of hadu specifically towards jobs the percentage of growth and all we see definitely there is a tremendous improvement in terms of uh, hadu and its ecosystem in terms of the number of uh, jobs or the, the positions that are been opted by the clients across different domains landscapes getting tremendously increased even today as of now in the us market there are plenty of jobs that left unfilled looking for the appropriate candidates to fill those positions even today even in the tough days the tough situations still there is a great demand for uh, hadoopers there is a great demand for hadoopers and i need not tell you definitely you'll be convinced with these reasons why you need to learn basically hadoop better career no second thought better salary obviously big companies are hiring because you know very well the technology adoption always happens from the big companies of course even the startups also adopt technology to the best extent but usually and learning hadoop you have better job opportunities and you see data is everywhere these days not just data everywhere big data is there everywhere today because of that reason definitely you need to be a part of a hadoop ecosystem you like it or you don't like it everyone must come into big data directly or indirectly situation has gone to that extent like how two decades back when someone needs to come into it industry they at least need to learn c and c++ kind of thing So in the today's uh, a scenario, everyone needs to have at least the basic knowledge on the big data space. Situation has gone to that extent, and you see the companies that are trying to focus on big data space. I, I, I'm just trying to mention it here, but it, this is not the end. you name the industry big data has been adopted there big data has been one second friends Sorry. so you name the industry <clears throat> taking from insurance to banking healthcare oil and gas exploration take any industry wherever there is a possibility of data getting accumulated or the tremendous increase in the data coming into their boxes day by day they all big data is is become it has become essential so before i dive into the actual uh, discussion of big data i would like to take a few inputs from your end what is your perspective towards big data as mentioned by me just before you definitely might have done some basic uh, homework before taking this demo something might have influenced you to take up this uh, course or at least think about this course i would like to hear from your end few statements i am not interested to listen the definitions from your end 
what is your perspective towards big data the last 5 10 minutes i i explained you briefly about the prospects towards big data and all that stuff is only to encourage you to understand the reality but i would like to ask you here what is your perspective towards big data i would like to hear from any of your end friends please feel free to unmute yourself whatever whatever is there in your mind at least that gives me the inputs or uh, to understand oh this is what the perspective you have based on that i can make my presentation to be more close to your expectation and more realistic rather than predefined well i don't come to the session with the predefined things in the mind it is all based on the participants need or the expectation so in that context i would like to hear at least a few inputs from your end what is your perspective towards big data please friends feel free to unmute yourself and share your perspective towards big data is it a platform is it a technology is it a language what is there in your mind towards big data please friends hey mal yeah uh, yeah radhika good uh, uh, hi uh, um, big data is the database uh, system in order to store a huge amount of data like uh, where five years two years data or about uh, like facebook data used to share in such amount of uh, data we can use this big data okay. hello yeah, yeah i appreciate it. i appreciate it. i really appreciate because it. Really, uh because relation relational database can't handle this uh, such amount of data uh for the more, um, for many years but uh, big data can handle that thing so you mean to say as your traditional rdbms cannot handle uh, the current day uh, data needs so that is where we are going for big data am i right yeah i really appreciate radhika i really appreciate your view towards big data yeah thank yeah. you thank you anyone friends Kiran, hi. Yeah, Kiran. Yeah, in the layman's term, for me, is uh, big data is like uh, whatever data is generated around us, and they just uh, channelize in a particular normal manner that uh, you can store or probably use it in certain manner that uh, it, it just configures itself within. So it doesn't stay like as it says as, as a big data. That's what I can think of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, no. Well, I just want to hear from your end so that I can make myself dynamic to give you uh, more inputs in our today's discussion. That's the only idea behind asking you this. I really appreciate your perspective towards uh, big data, Kiran. Appreciate. Uh, Sunil, uh, Vijay. Um, Komedi, yeah, Vijay, go ahead, Vijay. Uh, hi, hi, this is Vijay. Um, to me, big data is all about, um, you know, as the name depicts, it's a big data, which means volume is uh, huge. So, uh, the efficient way of uh, storing the data in a, in a distributed fashion, and uh, trying to utilize, um, you know, most of the hardware for uh, faster performance, which means retrieving the data. Uh, in a faster way and then uh, generating you know uh, reports out of it or analytics out of it to um, you know derive solutions in a faster manner uh, because in a traditional data warehousing environment uh, uh, performance is a key issue where you have to you know uh, wait for the data to actually you know slice and dice uh, I think that is a key factor which has actually the which has made uh, the which has created the evolution of big data where you can distribute the data in a, uh, in, in a, in a, a hierarchical fashion and then uh, extract them at a very fast pace. Well, that's really convincing. I appreciate. I appreciate. Rabin, yeah. 
Please go ahead, Rabin. Yeah. You can unmute yourself. Rabindra. You have an option to unmute yourself there. Hello. Yeah, Rabin, you can unmute yourself. Unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear you now. Yes. Okay. So where well, I I listened to the presentation, but um, the question is: Isn't the um, uh, the field uh, oversaturated now? No. I'm sure. I don't know. Uh, uh, the, the intention uh, behind asking this question, but I'm not interested to convince you or uh, drag you to the program saying you or sharing some convincing things. Big data has just started. It has just started. Not even 5 to 8% of the companies globally has completely adopted uh, Big Data and Hadoop as part of their landscape. Not even 5 to 8 percent of the companies. You can just imagine the scope of this uh, technology or the scope of this Big Data in the coming days. Uh, you can read any Gartner report that is on Big Data. You will come to know this can never be saturated because the data needs are growing day by day tremendously. And the, as the needs are growing day by day, obviously, what the need you have today is not the same tomorrow. And this never can be saturated. At least I could see the next decade, you have a, a tremendous potential in the big data space. You can read any Gartner report. You need not rely on me or you need not rely on someone, the scope for big data, maybe in the big data space, you see a lot of changes in terms of the new components, new technologies, a lot of things coming up. But yes, big data has got tremendous scope and potential. No second thought on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Rabin, you can unmute yourself if you want. Is it caller one or caller three? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I'm able to hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I think big data is more of a characteristic of the data. Like these days, there are data that's coming, then being generated from a lot of sensors and like devices, and you know, we're generating a high volume of data every day. And not just us, but it's just other machines and sensors, you know, uh, like, and then that's why the, the data is not just like um, classical data, it's not like exactly characterized uh, structured data. These days, we have a lot of unstructured data. and. These data come in high volume and they are generated in high speed. So to address all those things, we needed a different system. That's why we introduced uh, big data and uh, Hadoop, actually, I think. And then, then there comes Hadoop in the picture, I think, which will actually act as a platform to process this data. Oh, that's really more convincing, uh, Rabindra. I appreciate you are very close to what I'm about to discuss, you're very close to what I'm about to discuss. I really appreciate your perspective towards big data. So I don't, I don't discourage any of you. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy you have shared your views towards big data. I really appreciate. Um, probably the next 10, 15 minutes, we'll try to see what exactly big data is, because. If you are not able to understand certain uh, terms or basics or fundamentals, it will be very, very tough for 
uh, any of us to actually uh, get into the technology or get into the concept. Certain basics need to be very, very clear. So it is my regular practice to educate all my participants to follow the standard procedure. If you fail to understand certain things on your own, never mind. Good idea all the times that you divide this into when you are not able to understand big data on its own. Good that you divide this into parts. Try to understand what is data first and add big to this one and try to understand together, you will get the chance to understand big data more easily. So applying the same technique here, let me take you to this one. That's what I mentioned in the beginning of the demo. Understanding big data, how Hadoop facilitates processing of this big data, Hadoop and its ecosystem, and something related to the course and the questions at the end. That's what the agenda for the today's uh, uh, demonstration. As a part of that, what I just mentioned, when you fail to understand big data on its own, good that you try to understand what is data, and then add big to that one, you'll be able to understand big data easily. That's the best technique. This is what I said, divide and rule. One of the finest principles that has been followed by the British Empire to spread their colonies across the globe. And that's how they were able to rule a country like India for more than 200 years. Divide and rule. Applying the same technique, I'm trying to make you to understand what is big data. Bear with me for the next 5-10 minutes. We'll be able to see clearly what is big data. <clears throat> you look at this screen uh, or the slide closely. You have data at the lowest. When this data is processed in the given context, that gives you the information. When data is processed in the given context, it gives you the information. When information is further processed, when information is further processed, you get knowledge. When knowledge is further taken, you acquire wisdom. With wisdom only you make the decisions, either good or bad. Based on your decisions only, the future of the organization depends. So, if you look at this one closely, the future of the organization, the future of the organization, The future of the organization depends on your <coughs> The future of the organization depends on the decisions you make. But in order to make the appropriate decisions, it depends directly or indirectly on the data part. <coughs> data is the one which is the base to make whatever the decision. This is what we call it to be DIKW model. Data is the base. If there is no data, there is no information. No information, no knowledge. No knowledge, no wisdom. Without wisdom, 
you cannot make any decision this slide gives you a clear picture data is very very important and essential <coughs> data is very important and essential to any organization is what we can understand from this slide if there is no data there is no information without information we cannot have knowledge without knowledge we cannot acquire wisdom without wisdom you cannot make any decision either right or wrong that is what we call it as data information knowledge and wisdom popularly called as dikw model so this dikw model gives you a clear understanding data is the foundation data is the foundation you clearly understand data is something which is raw unorganized facts that needs to be processed data is raw basically unorganized facts that needs to be processed when the same data is processed or been organized into a structured fashion and been presented in a given context it it makes more sensible and that is what we call it as information i i am trying to give you a simple example to make you to understand between data and uh, information each student's test score is one piece of data each student's test score is one piece of data but the class average score or the school average score is considered to be the information each student's test score may not be meaningful to anyone either to the class teacher or to the school principal but the class average score or the school average score is going to be more informative either to the class teacher or to the school principal to conclude certain things so i hope you understand with this one friends what i mean by data one thing we have understood very clearly here data is very important essential and is the base or the platform for your organization growth or organization future directly or indirectly so hope this is clear to you with this we have understood data is very important and we have understood what is data basically now let us add big to that one when we are adding big to this one everyone like a uh, few of you came out with your own perspectives and if the same challenge is given to the society everyone will start coming out with their own definitions or perspectives definitely the industry will be confused again keeping this thing in the mind big organizations like ibm microsoft all has given a path to what exactly big data is so rather than putting this in as open ended discussion or something like they are confined by assigning certain characteristics to big data that is what we are about to see now big data is anything big data is anything which has got three essential characteristics is anything which has got three essential characteristics what are those three essential characteristics we have to big data volume the first and the foremost volume the second one variety and the third one velocity this is what we popularly call it as three v's volume variety and velocity are the three essential characteristics with which we define something called big data 
of course these v's are getting extended from time to time you have something called <clears throat> veracity you have something called value you have something called viscosity these v's are getting extended from time to time but one thing you need to understand these the three the first three whatever been mentioned are the basic essential characteristics to your term called big data so that is where i usually give you give an example to the participants all the times when i use the word called good citizen when i use the term called good citizen define a good citizen every everyone will start coming out with their own perspective is anyone who obeys the laws the local laws that are prevailing who pay taxes properly and regularly who is not harmful to the society who is going to contribute back to the society in the best manner who do social service everyone will start coming out with their own perspective same like big data that is the reason why law has defined good citizen i don't know really the uh, definition for good citizen by law but if you go and see a good citizen is anyone who do these things that is defined by law or the, that country or nation or maybe whatever it is to make this to be confined same like when i when i give this uh, word called big data to this uh, uh, industry they they they'll come out with their own perspectives not to make this as an open ended industry has defined with these three essential characteristics but time to time these characteristics are getting enriched with the additional characteristics like veracity value viscosity and all but the three essential characteristics will always be there with big data let us talk in detail about each characteristic of big data <coughs> start with uh, volume compared to the books what you have in your shelf these are more in volume compared to the books what you have in your shelf these are more in volume so with this what you understand friends what you understand about volume compared to the books what you have in your shelf these are more in volume what do you understand from this volume is always a relative term but not absolute term is always relative but not absolute volume is always a relative term but not an absolute term that is what you need to understand from this there is no such thing called absolute volume compared to the data what uh, i have on my laptop you may be having more compared to the data what you have someone else may be having more so volume is always a relative term it is not an absolute term you know very well how data volume is calculated 8 bits put together 1 byte 1024 bytes put together 1 kb 1024 kb put together 1 mb such 120 1024s you you keep increasing you have a gb tb i mean gigabyte terabyte petabyte exabyte and zettabyte so in order to make you to understand about petabyte i think all of your laptops or your systems are fitted with 1 tb hard drives at least or at least 500 gb hard drives imagine you have your laptop fitted with 1 tb hard 1 tb hard drive 
such 1024 1TB hard drives put together 1 petabyte. Such 1024 petabytes put together 1 exabyte. Such 1024 exabytes put together 1 zettabyte. The data that is present globally, you estimate, today it is somewhere around uh, 7 to 8 uh, zettabytes, it seems. 7 to 8. And this is growing very exponentially, day by day. And soon, we cross 1024 zettabytes that we are going to see in our lifetime. We are going to definitely surpass 1024 zettabytes globally. Can any of you know what is beyond zettabyte? What is beyond zettabyte? It is something called yottabyte. Such 1024 zettabytes put together, we call it as yottabyte. So you may ask me one thing, hey Srinivas, why are you discussing all these things? That's where I'm coming now. You look at this slide very closely, you understand. The data coming into your box or into your organization every day, as it is growing exponentially, it is being shown with the upward arrow here or upward graph. The data coming into the organization is growing day by day. The data coming into the organization is growing day by day. But the ability to process the data with your existing infrastructure is coming down day by day. I give you this context like this. Imagine with your existing infrastructure, infrastructure I mean whatever the software that you have set up and the storage you have done, all the landscape, whatever the warehouse that you have set up in your organization. I call it as the infrastructure. Using your existing infrastructure, you are comfortable of processing 5 GB of data per day. By any chance, if you get the data of 5.3 GB per day, this is your inflow. But your ability to process the data is only 5 GB per day. So which means, the 0.3 GB of data per day is left over. In three days, it accounts to 1 GB unprocessed data with you. <coughs> Over a period of time, you see, <coughs> in uh, 30 days, in 60 days, in 90 days, you see, GBs of data is getting accumulated into your infrastructure or into your landscape, which is left unprocessed. Till you process the data, you should treat that there is a valuable information inside it. You will come to know whether the data is really useful or useless only when you process it. Till then you should feel that there is a valuable stuff inside it. That is what I am trying to show you. The data availability to the organization growing up and the ability to process the data is coming down. There arises something called blind zone. The gap that is getting arised between these two graphs is what we technically call it to be blind zone. The more the blind zone is, the bigger the blind zone is, we are uncertain in terms of making the decisions because I have shown you already the slide in the beginning with the data only we are making the decisions. If you are not able to process the data, you cannot get information, no information, no knowledge, no knowledge, no wisdom. Without wisdom, we cannot make any decision. So, in order to make the decisions, what is expected here? Whatever the data that is coming into your box 
every day that you must be able to process it uh, in instantaneously and immediately then only the future of the organization will be appropriate i don't say will be different but uh, at least chances are bright that if you are able to process the data completely that will definitely give you the bigger insights of the data with which you are able to able to put your organization in the right track so big data as a part of the big data volume is throwing me the challenge volume is throwing me the challenge what is the challenge it is throwing me it is immediately throwing me a challenge that is if the volume grows beyond some storage limit how and where we store the data once you store the data you can think about processing it i can only think about processing after you successfully store it without storing there is no point thinking about uh, processing so the challenge what my volume is posing to me is how and where we store this data so volume is something that is related to storage it is throwing a challenge when the volume of the data grows beyond some limit the manageable limit of the existing infrastructure how you are going to store the data and where you are going to store store the data i mean someone said during expressing their views when the traditional relational databases fail to store the data where you are going to store the data that is what uh, related to your volume when it comes to the variety i'm just trying to make you to understand what are the different varieties of data we have as a part of that if you see alone in the image itself you have gif format jpeg png bmp and maybe few more alone in the image category if you see we have multiple and you see these are the different formats of the data that is available and if you see closely this one your entire data is divided into structured semi structured and unstructured semi structured and unstructured no problem with the structured data because we already has got the facility to store your structured data using your traditional rdbms that is what the symbol for database you are able to store your data using your traditional rdbms this is well addressed by the industry very long back what about semi structured and unstructured data semi structured and unstructured data that is uh, uh, you know web logs your sensor data you know very well how iot is revolutionizing the way we handle many things as part of our regular life and every sensor generating the data repeatedly for every fixed interval of time and this is not the structured data this is the semi structured data in certain cases it is unstructured data when you are collecting this kind of data which is huge or enormous there should be a way to store both the semi and unstructured data because structured we need not worry we have the solution of course when the structured data is also growing beyond some manageable limit of the databases you should have a way to store that data even so your your second your second characteristics uh, called variety is also throwing you a challenge how and where we store same thing again instead of saying 
just data i mean uh, i say huge data here now how and where we store wide varieties of data i hope you are following with me friends volume is throwing me a challenge what is a challenge how and where we store huge volume of data how and where we store wide varieties of data so you look closely into this entire discussion you really understand and appreciate your volume and your variety your volume and variety are throwing you the challenge related to storage and next comes is your uh, i mean these are more varieties of data that i thought of showing you more varieties of data i need not uh, focus much on this one you know very well varieties of data next comes is your velocity look at this screen thoroughly eight hours you worked at office your back home you switched on the tv someone reading on the screen there was a heavy snow in the city today there was a heavy snow in the city today does that make any sense to you because you already experienced it you already enjoyed it there is no point listening to someone saying there is a heavy snow today in the city what makes sense to you because you already experienced that you already enjoyed it but you will be definitely interested to hear or you will be very much you will be very much interested to hear from anyone saying tomorrow morning between 7 and 9 there will be heavy snow in these parts of city it makes more sense so which gives you a clear understanding what are the data weather data that is coming into my box if i am able to process the data very fast i will be able to share the meaningful information to all my customers imagine i got the data today it takes 24 hours for me to it takes 24 hours for me to process the data it takes 24 hours for me to process the data by the time the data is processed the disaster has already happened what is the point you processing the data what is the point you processing the data no point you processing the data because the disaster has already happened you only may be able to estimate the impact of the disaster but you cannot uh, take any preventive measures to face the disaster so my third characteristic called my third volume variety and velocity velocity is a characteristic that is related to processing not storage that is well connected to your processing hope you have understood uh, these three things friends whatever i mentioned to you in the last uh, 15 20 minutes of my discussion volume and variety these two are linked to your storage and velocity is linked to your processing the thing is how how and where we store huge volume and wide varieties of data
how and where we store huge volume and wide varieties of data. How we process huge volume and wide varieties of data very fast. Now tell me friends, what do you mean by big data? After my 20 minutes of discussion, again I am coming back to the same question called what is big data? Tell me now what you understood from big data. Friends, please respond. What you understood from big data now? Out of the discussion, what is me, what is made by me in the last 15-20 minutes? What do you understand from big data? Yeah, Vijay. Yeah, go ahead, Vijay. So it's talk, uh, I thought uh, I already mentioned, but it talks about huge volume and uh, faster processing, which means uh, which will deliver the results uh, to make right decisions or faster decisions. Yeah, yeah. So with this discussion, you need to get one understanding. You need to definitely get one understanding. Are you able to see my screen? Are you comfortable? There was some flickering in between. All of you able to see my screen, friends? Able to listen to me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So with this, I'm not trying to convince you here, but I want to make very clear to you, big data is Big data is a problem statement. Big data is a problem statement. You agree with me, friends? Yeah. I really appreciate Rabin. Rabindra, I really appreciate. Now, what has been shared by you, I really appreciate that. So, big data is neither a technology, neither a platform. Big data is not any of these. Big data is a problem statement. What, what problem it is stating? What problem it is stating? It is stating the problem. How and where we store huge volume and wide varieties of data? How we process huge volume and wide varieties of data very fast? So big data is a problem statement surrounding storage and processing. So big data is a problem statement Surrounding two things, storage and processing. Storage and processing. To this problem statement called big data, see this is a this is a different style of interpreting what is big data. I, I'm not trying to convince you, friends. Go across the internet, search anywhere. Nobody is going to tell you so clearly like this what is big data. They only will give certain statements and all, but big data is just a problem statement. It is definitely not a technology, not a landscape, not a platform, not a processing technique, nothing. It is just a problem statement. To this problem statement called big data, there is a solution given called Hadoop. 
as part of this one we have something called hdfs that is called hadoop distributed file system hadoop distributed file system that is what hdfs indicates and other side we have map reduce that is a programming model with which we process the data so hdfs is meant for hdfs is meant for storage and map reduce is meant for processing your storage unlike your traditional rdbms your storage allows you to store huge volume and any variety of data i am saying here not wide variety any variety of data whereas if you take i am not degrading databases here friends i am just telling you the limitations i am not degrading databases here so your databases can only store structured data but your hadoop storage can store any variety of data your hadoop storage can store any volume of data so any volume and uh, any variety can be possible with your with your hdfs because of the reason this is a distributed storage and this distributed storage is linear scalable linear scalable i mean as your data need increases you add more storage to it that's it as of today as of today with yahoo which has got the highest uh, hadoop cluster on this planet as of today yahoo is running the highest hadoop cluster as of today they have 13000 node i don't know the exact number but roughly 13000 node live hadoop cluster with yahoo they haven't started with 13000 node friends they have started with a 15 node cluster in the beginning 60 100 200 500 1000 10000 it is 13000 node hadoop cluster live running with yahoo still it is capable of uh, allowing you to add another 13000 or another 30000 that is what the beauty and the strength of hadoop hadoop storage allows you to store any volume of data and any variety of data not only your structured data your semi structured unstructured because your hadoop storage is a schemaless storage is a schemaless storage it is not defined with any schema to allow you to store only that kind of data it allows you to store any kind of data semi unstructured structured we need not think because structured storage we have already the solution available but still when that storage fails to store the structured data beyond some limit that also can be offered to your hdfs the beauty not ended here let you store 1 tb of data or 100 tb of data when it comes to processing it will be very fast because your processing is attached with massive parallel processing technique in the background which means your data is not going to be processed one after the other it is going to be processed in parallel on a large scale across the cluster uh, so your processing is going to be very very fast i mean i give you a classical example you have a piece of work if this work is given to if this work is given to one person probably he do in 10 days if the same work i give it to two people probably they can finish in 5 days if the same work is given to five people five people then they can finish in 2 days if the same work is given to 10 people then they can finish in one day if the same work is given to 20 people 
probably they can finish in half day. Same parallelism. I am applying to my processing here. <coughs> to make my data crunch so fast, it is almost like, a, like how your traditional RDBMS are fast in processing your data. I mean, the moment you want the data required, the required data is giving you with just query in a fraction of second. It is almost close to that. I don't say your processing at Hadoop level is exactly same like your traditional RDBMS kind of processing. But yes, it's possible very dearer and with the latest techniques like Spark and Scala, the processing has been made much more efficient, much more efficient. Now tell me friends, what you have understood from this entire discussion, what I made in the last 40, 45 minutes. Big data is a problem statement. To this problem statement, there is an open source solution called Hadoop. So this is a problem statement. And what is Hadoop? What is Hadoop? Hadoop is an open source solution that is given by Apache. And the same open source solution what is given by Apache is being absorbed by the companies like Cloudera, Hortonworks, IBM, all these companies, they have adopted this uh, Hadoop and they are providing their own flavors called Cloudera is providing a CDH, that is Cloudera distribution for Hadoop. Hortonworks is giving it as HDP, that is Hortonworks data platform. IBM is giving in the form of uh, big insights. Let it be anything, all are internally using the same Hadoop. So you need to understand friends. Hope uh, you are very clear with me. What is big data and what is Hadoop? How these two are connected to each other? 90% of the people who are looking at big data and Hadoop, either they think that uh, big data and Hadoop are the same or they give the same sense or they are one and the same. But it is absolutely wrong, friends. Big data is neither a platform nor a technology. It is not. It is just defining the problem. And this problem has been well addressed using an open source solution called Hadoop. I hope you are, you are pretty clear with me, whatever I discussed with you, your friends. I started my discussion uh, by telling you let us make, let us understand what is big data thoroughly, I said. Hope you got that one. How this big data is connected to your Hadoop, that also I have explained you. Your Hadoop is an open source solution to store huge volume and wide varieties of data using HDFS and process this huge volume and wide varieties of data with the help of your MapReduce. MapReduce is a programming model with which I am able to process the data very fast. I mean, I am going to store my data here. This is my node one. I have my data here. This is my node two. I have some more data here. I have my node three. I have some more data here. So all this data belong to the same data set. So what I did is, instead of me storing the data set on one machine, if I store the entire data set on one machine, then what will happen? I need to use the same machine or the same computing power to process that entire data. So when I start processing this data, one after the other, I process this one, then this one, then this one, then only I get the result. But instead, I want to process this block, this one and this one, same point of time. But you know very well, this by processing this one, 
I get only partial output. This one. I get this one. I get partial output. I get partial output. All these partial outputs now can be brought into the final output. That is the reason why this programming model is called a phased programming model, which has got at least two phases. One is a map phase and the other one is the reduced phase. So this is a programming model which runs in two phases, map phase. Once the map phase is over, then comes is your reduced phase. I hope uh, you are doing, you are, you are able to understand this one, friends. Because the processing is happening parallelly on different machines in the cluster, not one after the other, like in your traditional programming or traditional execution model. So we go very deep into those details, friends. We have a very detailed discussion, very detailed, I mean, you cannot even imagine to what detailed level I will go as part of our discussion without giving any pain to you to make you to understand how processing is going to happen at the grassroots level. This is called your map reduced job life cycle. How data is going to be processed? This is my node one. How different blocks are going to be processed by different mappers? And the output of the mappers, how it is being consolidated to finally give the output which is again stored on your HDFS. We have a very detailed discussion which spans across two sessions only on understanding the life cycle of the map reduce job. Only on understanding the life cycle of the map reduce job. The reason behind that one, friends, map reduce is the backbone. Look at this one. You clearly understand. What is that we have? This is what I call it to be Hadoop ecosystem. At the very grassroots level, we have data storage. On the top of data storage, we have data processing. And on the top of data processing, you have data access. Then you have data management and data analytics. This is what we technically call it to be Hadoop ecosystem. I have few questions. Yeah, please, please, please. Uh, when you talked about the various flavors of uh, big data, the Hadoop and uh, Norton world, where does Pentahu position itself in that? Uh, oh, that that's a classical question. That positions in the data analytics level. Okay. That is not a part of, I mean, Pentaho has got uh, fantastic data, I mean, characters with which I connect to my Hadoop ecosystem and uh, I fetch the data from uh, uh, HDFS and give the analytics to the end user. But, uh, so is Hadoop a data analytics platform. Yeah. Okay. So Hadoop is mainly all about storing and uh, uh, retrieving the data. Absolutely. See, whatever whatever your huge storage uh, need you have, that you offload it to Hadoop. Whatever the quick processing need you have, offload it to Hadoop. Once the processing is done, that process data we acquire through whatever the tool you want and do your analytics. Say, I give you a, a scenario here. You have your high, what I'm showing you now. Let me, under, let me explain you this part uh, briefly. Then I will take you to the platform and show you. At the very grassroots level, at the very grassroots level, we have something called storage. On the top of the storage, we have something called processing. This is what we technically call it to be Hadoop. You may ask me one thing, Srinivas, what do what we mean by Hadoop? Hadoop has got both storage and processing. That is what uh, we call it as Hadoop core. Whenever I use the term called Hadoop, I implicitly mean by core only. I need not tell that storage and processing. When I use the term called Hadoop, I implicitly mean Hadoop core only. On the top of this core, we have data access. How data access is there in the form of pig, in the form of a hive, in the form of a 
scoop like in different forms. The beauty part here is, see friends, when I write a pig script and run this pig script, it will run as a MapReduce job. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, don't worry. When I write a Hive query, when I write a Hive query and run this Hive query, it will run as a MapReduce job. I mean, all this data access layer is taking the help of my massive parallel processing technique. Massive parallel processing technique is already implemented through MapReduce. As writing MapReduce jobs using Java or other languages like Python and all, as it is going to be a time-consuming aspect, what people have done is they developed flavors on the top of MapReduce. Pick is a scripting flavor of MapReduce. Hive is a SQL level of MapReduce. Scoop is also a MapReduce flavor to import or export the data between your HDFS and traditional RDBMS. That is the reason why if you look at this ecosystem closely, on the top of the data processing, what is there in the data processing here? MapReduce only is there. Let you use Hive, Pig, Mahout, Scoop, anything. Ultimately, it will need to use MapReduce. I think you understand, friends, now why I said just before, I am going to discuss very in detail about MapReduce framework and its life cycle. Very in detail why I said is for the reason if you are strong with MapReduce understanding, you need not be a good programmer in MapReduce, friends. I'm telling you once again here. You need not be a good MapReduce programmer. But if you understand MapReduce thoroughly, you can easily understand Hive, Pig, Mahout, Scoop and all. This is where most of the training companies are trying to bypass. That is why most of the people who has learned Hadoop Still, they feel they are not confident to attend the interviews because they are not clear with how Hive is allowing you to process the data, how your piggy is allowing you to process data so fast because they belong to the data access layer which sits on the top of data processing. As it is a tough thing for people to explain a map reduce, they are going to focus less on that one. As a result, their next learning process has been severely impacted. But what we did is, um, instead of we leaving that map reduce, we have simplified it so that it can be easily digested by you. That is what the uh, beauty part of our training program. Because data storage, we need not focus much. Data storage is a plain storage part where you use some HDFS commands to understand how your let me explain you that even. So how you access your uh, your storage part using your... Have a look at this one. Hadoop, FS, hyphen LS. At the root level, what folder structure you have or what directories you have your C. Like how your traditional file system has got. If I say LS forward slash, it is giving me the local file system. But when I said here, this is my HDFS file system. Now, if you see closely this one, slash hive, I say here, have a look at this one, friends, very closely. Hive is a layer on the top of your MapReduce. So don't get tensed up looking at what I'm doing now. Don't worry. We have detailed sessions on all these things, but this is just to make you to understand why certain things need to be focused well? If they are not being focused well, you can learn Hadoop anywhere, friends. Even you can sit on your own and learn Hadoop. But there should be an advantage coming to us. And that is where, uh, you know, we do a lot of R&D in simplifying this learning process so that the net time you spend on learning these components is going to be minimized so that your effort is going to be maximized. I mean, the result of your effort is going to be Maximize. Here if you see, show databases 
I get what are the databases that I have here. Use techiebs. I, I say here show tables and select uh, star from student where max greater than 90 or 75 whatever. Now see this one. This is the hive query that I am running. But what is happening friends? What is happening? Launching job one out of one. Launching job one out of one. A map reduce job is getting executed in the background, which I'm going to show you here, friends. You look at this one very closely. You really appreciate and you, you understand what is happening. What is happening with this? You have a look at this one. You'll be able to see there is a map reduce job running in the background. I don't know whether you noticed this one or not, which is just initiated by me. What is that? Select a star from student where max greater than 75. What is application type it is showing here? Map 0%, reduce 0%. Execution is happening. See, map 0%, reduce 0%. Then you have map 50%, reduce 0%. Map 75%, map 90%, map 100%. Then the reduce phase is going to be initiated. But here, in this case, there is no reduce activity required. That is why after map is being done, you see, you got 21 records fetched from there. Now I think you are able to clearly understand here friends why map reduce is so important. In order to visualize if a question been asked in the interview that why when you run this query there is no reduce phase. You see here closely friends I, I take you to the map reduce job here and I show you the tasks that are running in the background or got executed. There is only a map task here. There is no reduce task. When you get the bigger insight of the technology, then facing the interview is not a big deal. What is the ultimate goal of learning? You want to get into Hadoop. You want to get a job on Hadoop. How you get the job? Only when you face the interview properly. How you face the interview properly? Only when you have sufficient knowledge. How that knowledge comes? Only in two ways. Either you sit on your own, and learn everything that is required for the interview or you take the help of a catalyst like us and make your learning process more efficient. These are the only two ways. There is no third way. So what we do as part of our training program is we simplify all this learning process and give you the track uh, that is required to you so that same two hours you work with us your output will be equivalent to 10 hours because the remaining 8 hours effort is going to be absorbed by you from us. That way you will be more productive. All the R&D that is required to be done by you is going to be executed by us and the result is going to be shared so that you gain the same experience and expertise to face any kind of interview. The same thing you also go here in the Hue browser you are able to query the same thing and you 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 can you can visualize that is what i say the entry level the entry level aspects here i say select a star from i say student and i run the i execute this query the same thing what i did from terminal here i did from the terminal here and i'm doing it from uh, the hive editor that's what we show and you have the chat here where you see that one. I hope you are following with me whatever I am trying to share with you here. So these the data yes. analytics that we do as part of this one. What Whatever been shown here, data storage, and on the top you have data processing, and on the top you have data access, and then comes is your data management. This is called your ecosystem. And on the top of this ecosystem, we have data analytics, which is a separate layer, not an integral layer. Till data management is Hadoop ecosystem. On the top of that, you, you use your data mirror, Tableau, ClickView, whatever, Pentaho, any BI tool, any traditional BI can sit on the top of your data management where you are able to perform your analytics required using your Hadoop ecosystem. Yeah, someone trying to reach me. Go ahead, friends. Yeah, Vijay. Uh, 
Srinivas, this Hadoop, as we saw before the history of Hadoop, all this came last six or seven years ago. Before that, we have been following, and even now we are following the traditional, you know, methodology of ETL to load the data into our data warehouses and relational tables, right? Okay. Yeah. So. How would we map that? For example, in the Hadoop, we, we talked about two major topics. One is about storage, and another one is about uh, processing. I think the processing we can equate that to the ETL part, ETL, yeah, um, and storage. Um, in the traditional world, we use RDBMS, which means we give the responsibility to the, uh, the database for Oracle or DB2, whatever it is, uh, to storage and uh, and retrieve the data. Is how is that how we can map them? Like Ah. I just try to understand. I, I, give, I, give you scenario. I give you the scenario now. So this is what your existing infrastructure, right? You have your enterprise data warehouse and on the top you have your BI layer built. This is already in place. Yep. You agree right. with me? Yeah, and then we have the ETL tool, uh, which is going to actually uh, you know, exactly. take care of extracting and loading the data into the EW. So we Absolutely. have three different components. That, that is where uh, I here. E e ETL, that is where I mentioned here. It is going to extract from yeah. different sources, right? Mm -hmm. From different sources, and it is going to transform, and then it is going to load into the target database. And on this target database, you have your BI layer built, right? Right. So, now, when this, uh, when this uh, ETL, a, a whatever you are seeing here, you are extracting from different uh, sources, and you transform that in the way you want, you load it into the target database, and on the top of this database, you have built your BI layer and you do your analytics. That is what we are doing right. all cool. these years. Now, same thing, you look at this. Now here, using Flume or Kafka or whatever, even proprietary components and all, from different sources, this may be a sensor, this may be your uh, web server, this may be your app server, and this may be your uh, uh, maybe your traditional, uh, maybe your telematic data. Data coming from, by running your, your vehicles, big containers and all, they, they are going to send the telematic data time to time. All this data, with various tools, whatever I mentioned, I bring it into my HDFS. You got it? Mm -hmm. And here, I extract all the data from different sources into my HDFS with the help of my Flume and Kafka kind of thing. And after bringing... Okay, the I want to stop. Yeah. I, I, sorry to interrupt because I just wanted to stop and ask questions so that you know when you ex explain the next concept, it will be easy to understand. Yeah. Um, so with HDFS, I, I would like is it map is it mapping that to a traditional database like an Oracle? Can we map it like that? And um, no, 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 no. Let me let that right there. No, let, let me finish, Vijay. Then I think you'll be able to understand okay. clearly. So I got all okay. the data from different sources into my HDFS. This is where my data is now. Of course. It will not be as a single block like this. Uh, on different nodes in the cluster, I have this data present. Now this data, I process and get some output. Okay. And this data, I have two options. One, using my hive, I can directly perform my own analytics, what I have shown you just now. I can do my own analytics. This is what I call it to be ad hoc query. This is not the complete, this is a ad hoc query. I have my data. You will be shocked to see this one, uh, Vijay, that the data for this student, whatever the data for the student, 
that is available in the form of a normal flat file but still we were able to query it hi warehouse checky bees and you have your student uh, data have a look at this one this is the data i have now on this data on this data i am querying whatever i have shown you now that querying is happening that querying is happening on this data i hope uh, you are okay. you, you are understanding whatever i am trying to share with you on this data yeah, yeah i'm okay able to follow yeah so you see select star from student if i say i am able to get this data whatever i am showing you here you are able to get this data right now come back to this one i extracted the data from different sources okay i transform this data in the way i want directly on this either i can run my hive queries and do my own analytics or using my scoop using my scoop i can export this data into my existing whatever existing you have that i can do it here and on the top my existing bi layer will work as is and whenever there is a whenever there is a heavy load on this one that load can be offloaded to my hdfs using scoop again using scoop import i download this data into my hdfs and i kill it there or i remove it instead of archiving instead of archiving and keeping it in the library now i archive into my hdfs and uh, the data that is been processed in my uh, hdfs using my map reduce only that data time to time i am going to load it or into my uh, database so that my existing warehouse infrastructure will work as is along with my other things so this entire setup if you observe closely whatever i am showing you this is also an etl but if you ask me uh, uh, clearly and closely is this etl going to replace this etl never this etl is going to form you already has got your enterprise data warehouse you already has got your enterprise data warehouse on the i mean this is your existing enterprise data warehouse existing enterprise data warehouse your hadoop based uh, your hadoop based enterprise data warehouse forms a layer beneath your existing enterprise data warehouse that is the reason why even as part of your hadoop ecosystem what i have shown you there is a warehouse available i don't know whether you noticed that or not your hive is just nothing but a warehouse that is the reason why user hive you have something called warehouse here so your hadoop ecosystem is going to work as a enterprise data warehouse layer beneath your existing enterprise data warehouse uh, infrastructure so it is going to add value addition to your existing enterprise data warehouse uh, not going to replace maybe someone who okay um, scratch i maybe maybe someone who is building from scratch now they may not go with the uh, traditional enterprise data warehouse they may go directly with the uh, hadoop based enterprise data warehouse but organizations where because you know very well every organization has got the infrastructure already in place this an hadoop based enterprise data warehouse will do value addition to the existing one but not going to replace so that layer will remain as is but whenever that layer is failing to hold the data all that is been offloaded to your hdfs and only necessary data is been loaded into your enterprise data warehouse and analytics can be done as is like same what your existing a team or existing 
um, uh, you know organization is following the same will continue this will add more weightage or more value addition to your existing enterprise data warehouse infrastructure so a few questions I have. One, let's say we already have an enterprise warehouse and uh, and we want to retain that, right? There's no point in decommissioning that because a lot of effort have gone in. Yes. Um, but at the same time, organizations want to go to Hadoop and you know, they want to um, you know, have the benefit of that. In that case, do we use uh, something like a scoop uh, to extract the data from the uh, you know, HDFS and load it into the EDW? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we do is, instead of we loading everything, we are going to load only the data that is processed based on some context. Only that data is going to be loaded into your enterprise data warehouse. Okay. And in, in, in an environment, in, a, in our environment, let's assume that there is no data warehouse and they are building it from the scratch and they are going with a Hadoop uh, uh, Absolutely uh, not framework. Absolutely because I can have directly this one where my Penta hmm. kind of BI can be directly connected to my Hadoop uh, and do my analytics because we are correct. No, no, my, my question. Okay, my question is uh, in a traditional warehouse we have the facts and dimensions and star schema and snowflake schema and all this stuff, right? Uh, how does that concept is implemented in the HDFS? That is where we have Hive now. Okay, so to that history, is where we have uh, Hive now. the uh, which, which I have shown you very oh, okay. clearly here where you are able to, uh, the same hive, the same hive what mm. the warehouse what we have here, this warehouse is accessible even to the external world. Using your JDBC. But the, the warehouse should hold, for example, the employee table that you showed me, yes. uh, how is it built in the HDFS so that it can retain the history? Obviously. Because you are getting changes every day. So, are they? Are we going to dump all the thing, all the data into the HDFS and then let Hadoop, uh, sorry, Hive decide on the uh, on on the required information or or to to build the what well, is it? I totally understand whatever it is. that one. See, if you look at this one very closely here, whatever I mentioned, see, tomorrow you get one more file here into the same directory. That is a delta. Hmm. Where that meta hmm. is free or the meta information can be maintained by you explicitly in the external. Uh, uh, on a, a traditional database like today this is a delta, this is a delta, this is a delta can always be maintained by you mm. in the way you want. Okay, you're saying you will put all the delta or whatever it is in the same folder. Yes. And then let how you come and read all the data. Absolutely. You put any amount of okay. data here under this one, under this table, uh, at every delta that you are getting every day, yes. Okay, and from the end user point, business doesn't care about whether it is a file or how it is stored, right? So how do we um, ah, you know, that's encapsulate where, that? Yeah, that's where that that's where the, the question arises here. That's where you have something called, uh, you know, you project the structure onto this data what is being stored using Hive. Uh, that is nothing but creating the schema, creating your your definition. Okay. Through that definition, you are able to uh, access the data actually. If you go and see here, so like a view. Yes, exactly. Describe student. If I see okay. here, you have the description for the student like this. Okay. And you are able to get the things done. But and what would be the underlining? Is that but student? Is it the? This is not. This is a file, right? This is the whatever we saw. It was just a flat file. Uh, but you are redefining that into a uh, into view or table structure. Uh, I don't know how you define that or how we call it. But you build a view on top of it using Hive, and then you expose that to the business so that they can come and query the tables. Uh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. Okay. So that is and, where. And where does map? Really here, this this is where your Hadoop ecosystem is. So that is how we 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 oh. we learn in detail about. Each and every component you have, Hive, Pig, Avro, Maud, Scoop, which forms the access layer on the top of my proxy, right? And on the top of this data access, we have something called management, where we have Uzi, Chukwa, Flume, Zuki, Prendal, which are going to help me in managing the data that is being ingested into my uh, data storage. So this whole thing put together my Hadoop ecosystem. So as part of our program, 
we are going to discuss about all these components whatever been shown here like hdfs map reduce hive pig scoop uzi flume zookeeper all these components we are going to discuss in detail so that we understand how these components are going to contribute their share because it is not just hadoop anymore it is the strength of hadoop components that is where we are calling we are using the term called ecosystem we are going to learn all these components in detail so that we'll be able to use those components appropriately as part of our uh, uh, maybe go to workplace or you build some use cases so that you understand how these components are going to contribute to make things happen as a hadoop all right so that is what so hope you understood the entire agenda for this uh, uh, for this demonstration what is big data and how this big data is well connected to hadoop and as part of this hadoop what are the components we have and putting all these components how we are calling that as ecosystem and what components we are going to learn as part of uh, our course along with this one we also see the bigger view of uh, spark and scala and of course uh, this batch we are also planning to give a session or two on tableau kind of thing so that you understand how analytics can be done uh, on the top of the data that is been processed by uh, you using your map reduce or the other components like hive pig and all so when you when you know clearly how your data is going to be analyzed at the end then the data processing style is going to be changed so keeping that thing in the mind we felt that uh, a tableau or a click view kind of uh, introduction at the end of the program is going to make more sense to understand why data needs to be processed uh, uh, very effectively then only it is going to be meaningful to the end user so keeping that thing in the mind uh, yeah. uh, one last question i think you know uh, before we jump into the next topics uh, no we are done we are done we don't, just, we don't have anything okay. we don't have anything to discuss okay. for today uh, i'm i'm done with my demonstration so hope uh, you got some bigger picture of what exactly big data is and hadoop and its ecosystem and uh, regarding what we are going to do as part of our course i need not tell you much uh, how practically they are going to be and this is what the strength this is what the speciality or the specificness of we don't go by pptts now ppt is only going to help you in visualizing certain concepts but most of the sessions are going to be and even as part of every session most of that is going to be practical so that you understand or oh, when shrinivas was, was able to do the same thing in the class today why can't i go back and do the same thing on my own and if i have any question yes i can come back and ask you know us to get it rectified so that gives you the strength to face the interview the most challenging thing what i am saying for the last 5 years of my presence uh, uh, closely in the in the big data space you want to believe 9 years back when i started uh, you know when this uh, uh, new initiations happening at the apache level because i am the one Uh, who is going to watch very closely things happening at the apache because i started my career as a hardcore c programmer then into java space when java has been launched the market from that day till date i am in the same java stream so every day i don't go to bed without uh, seeing what are the latest things happening at the apache level i i, I love it so uh, when i when i started looking at uh, the new initiation happening at the incubation level something towards data crunching when i when i started the same when i discuss when i started discussing the same thing with my colleagues and all you know they have commented saying hey shrinivas you bring something or other new every day they they, they loved at me but today you see the same apache initiation on big data space that is hadoop now it is it is the backbone for all the major uh, infrastructures that is been built by the big companies like cloudera even ibm even intel has closed their division now it is now with cloudera only all the big companies mapar you take anything all using the same uh, core ingredient of your hadoop and mapreduce so we know the bigger insights of the technology 
and we know how it is taking the new dimension each day so we definitely can uh, guide you better in making up your skills acquired uh, i don't say that you know very easily but with your effort you can uh, acquire it very easily right so this is what uh, i thought of uh, sharing with you for today friends i uh, hope uh, you have enjoyed the demonstration you have any questions please feel free to ask yeah vijay go ahead okay um so just to summarize this i just wanted to ask you uh, three questions so fume uh, can you tell me in one line what fume is good? fume will do is a data ingestion tool so which means uh, whatever data that is generated in the outside world it just drops into the hdfs exactly exactly what does what does map reduce do the processing uh, but why do we need to process because already the data is landed into the hdfs right See, we'll not be you will not be using the same data right uh, so data is already inside your database then why you need to query it hmm. okay but that's where hive is uh, now uh, hive, hive is there to actually talk to that you, your storage is only storing the data but you need to take what you need right flume is putting the data in it okay does it mean that everything is over we need to extract whatever you need right Maybe sometimes okay. I'm going to work with my sensor mm. data, with my social media data. Both put together, I want to do some analytics. Okay. Then comes is your, then so, comes is your. Uh, I mean, various components. Not just I don't say only based on the need, mm. based on the context. I decide. Oh, this is the right component to do this one. Right. Okay. So. after you process it uh, then what is the significance of hive uh, that is where the data is getting processed let us get biased just, here vijay it, let us let us not get biased here see it is not that every time we bring a, a, the hive or something like into picture it is all based on your need many times i don't need even a hive at all and many times i may hmm. depend only on hive i don't use map reduce in any form I, we have done a POC to a company okay. where they don't use MapReduce pig at all. They only use Hive. Does it mean that okay. you know, we cannot say after processing is being done, what role is played by Hive? There is no thumb rule that Hive need to play this role only every time. That all depends upon how you want the data to be accessed. you want the data to be dumped into the traditional enterprise data warehouse then you directly use scoop to export that into your a traditional warehouse from there you run your analytics you want to do your analytics in the hive itself or in the in the hadoop itself then you have a way not only your not only your hive you also has got something called impala which is in memory uh, in memory query on the top of your hive which will be more efficient than hive so there is no okay. thumb rule here that it needs to be done only in this way it all depends upon uh, i think in case and uh, how you want to build the things so until and unless we confirm okay. that i cannot tell you that this needs to be done or there is no generic mechanism here and more specifically when it comes to the hadoop ecosystem it is ad hoc there is no predefined thing like uh, you know best practices like you take uh, SAP methodology in SAP, you don't have such kind of thing. The standard best practices formulated in the Hadoop ecosystem because by the time I am formulating certain standards, the components are getting shifted to some other. Now, if you look closely, now your Hadoop, I mean HDFS and MapReduce is almost like outdated. Now people are rushing towards uh, Spark and Scala, working with Kafka. Yeah. working with cassandra and maybe two years mm. down the line even those but still mapreduce is been widely used in the industry without understanding hdfs and mapreduce you cannot go to spark and scala because ultimately your spark is going to run on the same hadoop cluster without understanding hdfs and mapreduce we cannot understand i don't know how people are learning spark without uh, having knowledge on hadoop and i mean hadoop and ecosystem what crazy i i i feel wonder see having so much experience in the industry 
I myself feel that without these basics, we will not be able to prosper. But I don't know. It is a wonder to me. That is the reason why most people, they are facing challenges at the workplace. They need on-job support. They need various things. Every day is a struggle life. Every day is a torture day. Only thing is we are going to the workplace. End of the month, we are getting the pay. But we never know when we are being thrown out. Every day is a torture day. It's not a happy day. It's all because that we are not, you know, we are not acquiring the skills that is actually needed. And that is the reason we have the challenges every day at the workplace. And it always needs to be learned or dealt in the, in the appropriate fashion. Then only, maybe it, it takes time, more time than usual learning process, but it is a standard way and the best way to give you the appropriate results. Is uh, courses like you know predefined and is the course content or uh, uh, like you know if you take C or C plus plus it's with the ocean like you know there is so much to explore. Uh, whereas if you take uh, any of the other um, uh, GUI based tools, it is very confined. You know, uh, how do you re relate uh, this one Hadoop? Like, is it again a ocean where it, it goes on and on, or is it is it like confined to a certain limits where it's easy to actually consume and digest? most of the stuff yeah that's where again i say again based on the perspective when you say c and java kind of thing is an ocean um that is acceptable to a person uh, uh, who is learning uh, those things for the first time usually you learn c and java at your beginning of your career so it looks to be ocean yeah. but today if you see c and java are very small things Because the experience you gain and the exposure you 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 underwent all these, you feel uh, what is there in C is the same control constructs we have, the same everything. What more we have in C? Uh, I used to feel that it is an ocean, but now it is not anymore. But thing is, the same basics we are using everywhere, every time to write any any volume of code. Same even here, if you are fundamentally strong. Everything looks to be simple. I tell you like this, Vijay. If you are strong in Hadoop, you need not rush to some place to learn Spark. But people are rushing to training places to learn Spark. Even after learning Hadoop, because of the reason, they are not strong in Hadoop. They never understand why Spark is required. That also needs to be taught by someone. Okay. But when I use Hadoop properly, I myself should feel Oh, Hadoop is not able to give me the expected results in this context. Then what is the alternative? When I look into the documentation of Spark, I understand, oh, my limitations of Hadoop are being addressed here. That's it. Over. Your Spark learning process is over. But the learning is not happening in that way. When the learning is not happening in that way, everything looks to be ocean. When learning is happening in an in a in a predefined fashion, system. everything looks to be simple. Hmm. That is again the perspective difference. Yes. Well explained. Thanks, uh, Srinivas. So wonderful, friends. I appreciate you know Vijay that you know at least uh, you asked more questions so that you know definitely others have been benefited. Uh, Kiran, Komudi, uh, I hope you all uh, uh, got the right insights of what exactly we are going to do as part of our ecosystem. So you have any questions, friends, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, we end up at this level with the expectation that you enjoyed your uh, session today. You have any inputs or feedback to be given, please share with me so that I, I rectify myself and make more myself more refined in the coming days to bring more content to the participants. Yeah, Kiran. Yeah, Srinivas, that was a really good session and it was very informative. Thank you. Thank you for the session. Wonderful, Kiran. I appreciate it. So if you don't have questions uh, at this stage, uh, uh, we end up at this level. Uh, probably my people, you have any, any questions related to um, the course or you know any, any anything that is related to technical, please feel free to ask. If we don't have any questions, we end up at this level.